Hello and welcome to this Learn at Home lesson. This is a science lesson for children in Lower Key Stage 2, so that's Year 3 and Year 4 aged 7 to 9. On screen now is a list of everything you'll need to take part in this lesson. When you see the pause icon appear on screen, pause the video and take a moment to think about the question I've asked you. If you're working with someone, you can talk about your ideas. Do you have everything you need? Let's get started. These lessons are all about scientists and the work that they do. Today, we're going to work scientifically to generate suitable inquiry questions and make careful observations. Here's the first question for you to think about. How could a scientist help to catch a criminal? Now, there are scientists who actually do this for a living. Do you know what these kinds of scientists are called? Pause the video now. They're called forensic scientists, and forensic scientists help analyse evidence from crime scenes to help the police collect proof that someone has committed a crime. Now, this job needs a lot of knowledge from all three branches of science. A forensic scientist needs to be really good at thinking outside the box and at solving problems too. Part of a forensic scientist's job might be to do DNA tests, identify unknown substances, or to help the police match fingerprints to their suspects. A forensic scientist needs to be patient and resilient. They've got to make sure their results and conclusions are accurate. DNA testing might help match a piece of evidence to a police suspect, but that's not the only way it's used. DNA testing is also used to help people find out about their ethnicity or find out about their family. After putting a DNA sample through various tests, the DNA makes patterns like this. The scientist will make careful observations looking for matching patterns and similarities. Sometimes a detective might find an unknown substance at a crime scene. It's important to find out exactly what it is so the police have as much information as possible. A forensic scientist must use their chemistry knowledge to test how the substance reacts to different things like heat, acid or water. The reaction will tell them what the substance is, or what it isn't. Do you know anything about fingerprints? Where do they come from? Why would they be significant to a forensic scientist? Our fingerprints develop before we're born, and everyone's fingerprints are unique to them. Even identical twins' fingerprints are different. They can be used as passwords, for example locking and unlocking a phone, but this isn't actually always the most secure way to lock something. The fact that everyone's fingerprints are different means that matching a person's fingerprint to one found at a crime scene can prove that they were there at some point. When we touch something, the natural sweat and oils on our skin transfer onto the object, leaving the pattern of our fingerprint. To collect the print, a fine powder can be gently brushed over the print which will stick to it. Then, using the sticky side of some tape, the print can be lifted and stored for evidence. Computers and careful observations can then be used to match two fingerprints. It's done by looking at the patterns the tiny ridges on our fingertips make. There are three main types of fingerprint patterns – loops, walls and arches. Let's take a closer look at some of these patterns now, starting with the loop. Loops are the most common pattern found in a fingerprint. They start on one side, loop around and end on the same side. You can see on screen now that there is a triangular delta pattern next to the loop. They're nearly always found next to a loop fingerprint, and they're really important for identifying and matching fingerprints. The wall. Around one in four fingerprints will have a wall pattern. Wall patterns look like a spiral, or small circles inside one another. 
and you can see here that a wall pattern should normally have two deltas in it. The arch. An arch starts on one side of the finger and ends on the opposite side, and there's this hill shape in the middle. Arches are the simplest patterns, but they're also the most rare. Only about 1 in 20 fingerprints will have an arch pattern. So now it's time for us to start thinking like scientists. What inquiry questions could you ask about fingerprints to begin a scientific investigation? Take a look at your fingertips. Can you see any of those patterns that we were just talking about? Now, a better way to study these patterns is to actually make a fingerprint. And I'm going to show you a really great simple technique for making fingerprints now. How to get a clear fingerprint. Firstly, colour in a square on some paper using a pencil. Rub the fingertip that you're going to print on the square. Then, press your finger onto the sticky side of some tape. Finally, so that you can protect the print that you've just made, and so that you can look at it easily, stick the tape down onto some white paper. Let's take a closer look at that technique in action. First, colour in a square on some paper using a pencil. It's best to use an HB pencil for this, or an even softer graphite pencil, rather than a colouring pencil or something like that. And that's because it's the graphite that we need to lift the fingerprint. The next step then is to rub the finger you're going to print on the square. And you can move your finger around a bit to make sure that it gets a good coating. Once you've done that, uh, there we go, you can see that. Press your finger down onto the sticky side of some tape. And again, you can roll it around to make sure you get a good clear print. And there that is on screen, you can see. And the last step is then to stick that tape onto some white paper, or I'm just for this example using another sticky note. And you can see, once it's there on paper, it's very clear to see and look at closely. Now it's time for today's activity. Your task is to print your own fingerprints on the worksheet you can see on screen now. This is one of the sheets included with the activity sheets that accompany this Learn at Home lesson. Use the technique I just showed you to print your fingerprints. Once you've done that, take a look at these fingerprint pattern cards. Use them to identify the patterns you can see on your own fingerprints. Write the names of the patterns below each print on the worksheet. Once you've done that, it's time to come up with your own scientific inquiry question. Now remember, inquiry questions lead scientists on to making investigations to find the answer to those questions. You need to think of an inquiry question about fingerprints. For example, my question is, how many deltas do I have? Remember, the deltas are those little triangular patterns that you can see on fingerprints. So my question is, how many deltas do I have? Do I have more, less, or the same than other people? One of the ways I could conduct an investigation into that question would be to print out some extra copies of this sheet and collect the fingerprints of a willing volunteer or two, perhaps someone else in my family. Then I could compare them, count the deltas, and get an answer to my inquiry question. Now you're welcome to investigate that question I've just given as an example, or you can think of one of your own. If you can't print out these worksheets, or you just don't want to, that's absolutely fine. You can just look at the fingerprint pattern cards on screen, and then you can work on plain paper or perhaps in a notebook. Whatever you do, that's absolutely fine. After today's lesson, you could continue working as a forensic scientist by lifting fingerprints off some objects around your home. You could then look at those fingerprints and try to match them to their owner. 
If you'd like to have a go at that, take a look back at the slide we looked at earlier. And we've included these slides with the resources for this lesson. So you can see here that forensic scientists lift fingerprints by brushing them lightly with a powder. That way they can then uh, lift that fingerprint with some sticky tape and stick it down onto a piece of paper to study it. You can see here that they're using a dark powder and you could use something like uh, you might have say some charcoal at home that you could crush up or you could take some pencil shavings and use that graphite to brush onto a fingerprint. Alternatively, you can use a very fine lighter coloured powder, for example talcum powder. That works really well. You can brush it onto the print and then lift it using sticky tape. The only difference is that you will then need to stick that tape down onto a dark piece of paper to be able to see that light pattern. Thanks for joining me for this Learn at Home lesson. There's more information about this lesson as well as others in the series in the description below this video. If you've not yet got your hands on the resources that I've talked about, the ones that accompany this lesson, or maybe you've just come across this video for the first time, stick around to find out how you can download the Learn at Home lesson packs, as well as accessing thousands of resources which are ideal for teaching and learning either in school or at home, all from planb.com. For more information, advice and resources for learning at home, search for Plan B or visit planb.com. The Home Education page is packed with information about how we can help you with teaching your children at home. As well as thousands of premium resources, including the Learn at Home lesson packs which accompany these videos, there are hundreds of free resources available to download as well. Don't forget to check the links and information in the description below this video for other ways in which Plan B can help you with learning at home.